Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. As we introduced at the Museum of Myeloid Art, the myeloid neoplasms are cancers that derive from myeloid progenitor cells. These are stem cells that give rise to the myeloid cell lineage, which includes red blood cells, platelets, monocytes, and granulocytes, such as neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. The lymphoid lineage, on the other hand, are your B cells and T cells, but just leave them out of it for now. Lymphoid neoplasms will be covered later on in the unit. In this sketch, the theme is myeloid leukemia, both acute and chronic. First, notice that we have a sanguinous-looking crab plastered on the wall there. That's just to remind you that we're dealing with leukemias. In other words, we're going to see neoplastic white blood cells out in the circulation. In the setting of acute and chronic myeloid leukemia, however, this isn't where the cancer started. To figure that out, we need to head to the bone marrow. Let's start with the acute version. Acute myeloid leukemia, or AML, is caused by a somatic mutation in a bone marrow stem cell, specifically a myeloid stem cell. This cell gets stuck in the myeloblast stage and starts to proliferate like crazy, filling the marrow and blood with millions of immature myeloid progenitor cells. To remember myeloblasts specifically, think of these blasts of spray paint made by this urban artist. Those immature, irregularly shaped splotches of paint are going to be our recurring symbol for immature cells getting pumped out into the circulation before they're fully formed. And because AML specifically involves myeloblasts, which are precursors to granulocytes, we've made the splotches blue, white, and pink to remind you that we're dealing with a basophil, neutrophil, and eosinophil progenitor cell. This disease progresses rapidly, which is why it's called acute. In contrast, Chronic myeloid leukemia, or CML, is characterized by the proliferation of more mature cell types and, as a result, tends to have a more indolent course. So, to convey a chronic indolent progression of CML, we've brought in our recurring chronic grandfather clock. And, since CML involves more mature cell types filling the blood, notice that Lichtenstein's Bende dots are fully formed perfect circles. Just like in AML, We've made the dots pink, white, and blue to remind you that we're dealing with granulocyte progenitor cells specifically. That means immature eosinophils, neutrophils, and basophils. Let's head back to the other rooftop and complete our picture of AML. AML primarily affects adults, with a median age of presentation of 65 years. Why did that one measly stem cell start to go crazy like that? Well, as it turns out, Anything that causes damage to the DNA inside bone marrow cell precursors can increase the risk of malignant transformation to AML. This includes exposure to chemotherapy, which is usually designed to cause damage to DNA. As you might expect, the resulting neoplastic cells often have mutations, deletions, or translocations. On the test, the classic clinical vignette involves a patient with a history of some other form of cancer, who was treated with chemotherapy and is now presenting with symptoms and signs of acute leukemia. Another risk factor for AML is ionizing radiation, which also causes injury to DNA. Look out for the atomic bomb survivor, or the wayward radiology technician who eschews precautions, resulting in chronic exposure to radiation. Here's a weird one. Exposure to high levels of benzene, which can happen to employees in the plastics or rubber tire industries, will also increase one's risk for AML. <laughs> 